Sending and receiving explicit naked pictures or sexting has become a part of everyday life for teenagers. If you're worried about embarrassing or intimate photos coming back to haunt you, you can inst instead send versions which self-destruct just a few seconds later. The mobile phone app Snapchat is proving massively popular amongst young people. Snapchat is one of the most popular social media platforms out there, known for its disappearing messages, and it's a go-to app for all of the teens. Adults, not so much, but there are some of those predatory ones that seek out places that teens visit. And not that Snapchat is not interesting or fun, it's a creative way to communicate, but for adults it's mostly too childish or too vain. And as a parent, I totally recognize that it poses unique risks, particularly when it comes to sexting. The seemingly temporary nature of Snapchat messages can give teens a false sense of security, leading them to share intimate content that can easily be captured or misused. For these teenagers, it's the latest and most fun way to keep in touch with friends, and each of them sends about 30 pictures a day. But here's what's different about this app. There's a timer, so those images disappear after a few seconds. Dubbed the sexting app. And frankly, it's scaring the hell out of everyone over 40. Snapchats caused a stir in the country where it was developed, with the suggestion it's being used by young people to send sexually explicit photos of themselves. Snapchat's appeal largely stems from its promise of disappearing messages. That's what it's known for. Teens often believe that once a snap is viewed, it's gone forever. However, we all know by now that this is not really the case. Screenshots can be taken without the sender's knowledge, and there are third-party apps that can be used to save snaps without alerting the sender. This all-American teenager fell victim to a sextortion plot. Now his devastated parents are speaking out to Inside Edition. Like a lot of teenagers, Jordan started a flirtatious relationship with what he thought was a pretty young woman on social media. She convinced him to send her an explicit photo. But she turned out to be three scam artists from Nigeria who demanded $1,000 or they'd send the picture to all of Jordan's family and friends. In desperation, Jordan told the extortionist, I'm kill myself right now because of you. Good, came the reply. Do that fast or I'll make you do it, I swear to God. Jordan shot himself to death. The potential for privacy breaches is therefore quite high. Once a private photo or a video is captured, it can be shared widely and uncontrollably, and this can lead to embarrassing situations, damage reputations, and even bullying. The illusion of temporary privacy can have lasting negative impact on teens' life, such as the psychological toll of sexting can be profound, especially for teens. The pressure to participate in sexting can come from their peers or partners, leading to feelings of coercion and stress. The aftermath of shared intimate content can cause some severe emotional distress. I mean, some adults would have problem to deal with that kind of stress. Now imagine teens whose brains have not even fully developed to cope with the emotional strain. Imagine a teen whose private photos have been shared without their consent. This can lead to some serious feelings of regret, shame, and anxiety. And in some cases, the emotional impact can be long-lasting, affecting their self-esteem and mental health. It's uh, an absolute tragedy that three men from the other side of our planet came into my home while I was sleeping and murdered my son. The rates of sextortion are skyrocketing. Real life stories highlight the devastating effects of teens who have undergone through such ordeals. Well, more than two thirds of teens and adults report that they've shared intimate pictures online or even experienced grooming or catfish behaviors. That's according to a study released in April by Snapchat's parent company. It's a statistic that hits home for a Sumter County family. They say their 13-year-old son was a victim of sextortion and took his own life. Timothy Barnett played the saxophone, was loved by his family, and like most kids, was on social media. The Barnett family is now suing Snapchat. I spoke with one of their lawyers today. He says the company needs to be held responsible for negligence and their role in Timothy's death. Sexting can also have some serious legal implications, especially whenever minors are involved. The exchange of explicit content involving individuals under the age of 18 is considered child pornography, which is obviously illegal. Teens caught sharing or possessing explicit images of minors can face several legal consequences, including 
concealed criminal charges or even registration as a sex offender. These legal issues can have long-term effects on their lives, impacting their future opportunities and their social standing. Stuff on the internet has a nasty habit of sticking around for a long time. So Snapchat sexting presents a perfect storm of risks that parents need to be acutely aware of. The false sense of privacy combined with the potential for some severe psychological and legal consequences creates a situation where the dangers far outweigh any perceived benefits that Snapchat could have. Imagine the emotional turmoil a teen faces when their intimate photos are shared beyond their control or the lifelong ramifications of a legal charge. These scenarios show us the critical need for awareness and some proactive measures, something every responsible parent would actually innately know. One thing that we always stress is the need for open and honest communication. This is your first line of defense. Now, I know that this video is meant for parents, but whether you are parents, educators, or community leaders, you must engage in discussions with your teens about the risks and consequences of sexting. Creating an environment where teens feel comfortable discussing their online experiences is very crucial. Some of the strategies that I would recommend include things like conversation starters, use current events or news stories about sexting to initiate discussion, digital footprint, explain how digital actions have long-lasting effects even if the content appears to disappear, peer pressure, teach teens how to handle pressure from peers and reinforce the importance of making their own choices. Try and leverage technology that you have access to, to help keep children safe online. I mean, we're lucky enough to live at an age when we have this kind of technology at our fingertips. So use it. Our app, FamilySafe, for instance, is a comprehensive tool that offers several features that are specifically designed to monitor and protect teens. Some of its awesome features include things like suspicious keyword detection that alerts parents if their child uses or receives inappropriate language. Inappropriate picture detection, on the other hand, identifies and flags any explicit content. Screenshot capture, which is the latest feature, allows you to monitor and capture suspicious activity live. And social apps monitoring keeps keeps track of interactions on social media platforms, and that includes Snapchat. But your actions should go far beyond that. So promote activities that build self-esteem and foster genuine connections. Encourage your teens to engage in hobbies, sports, and social groups that interest them. Create a supportive environment where teens feel valued and understood. Having a strong support system can help them make better choices and avoid these risky situations. The way I look at it, it's essential that parents, educators, policymakers, and tech companies work together to create a safer digital environment. These issues are issues we all create, so the solutions are firmly in our hands. So while Snapchat sexting continues to be a prevalent issue, awareness and proactive steps can make a significant difference. And who knows, maybe if we stick with it, eventually we'll fix the whole system, and if not, at least we'll have tools like FamiSafe to help us through it. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I hope that it was eye-opening, or at least something to think about, something that you perhaps haven't even considered. So if you have teens and you have some experience of them using Snapchat, or maybe you've come across them sexting, or other activities that you disagree with. Write it down into comments, we would love to hear from you. And not just for our sake, but for the sake of other parents. Let's help each other to raise our kids better. You know, we all make mistakes, but I think that together we can, we can pull it off. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.